Chris Willey and his team are conducting experiments on a student while a documentary crew roll the cameras. The second year PhD student in the human kinetics program at UBCO has been getting a lot of attention lately for his research into cerebral blood flow. We can measure blood flowing through the different arteries in the neck and in doing so we can measure uh, how much blood goes to the brain stem or how much blood goes to the cortex, uh, which is kind of the front part of your brain where you're doing most of your thinking. And this is important because we see uh, changes in blood flow distribution patterns in different types of diseases, um, during exercise, during when people go to high altitude, um, in a variety of different circumstances. The 26-year-old's investigations are challenging many long-held assumptions about the arteries' role in controlling blood pressure and blood flow to the brain. Many Canadians suffer from diseases like stroke, where the blood flow to the brain is restricted. We're learning that uh, the blood flow to your brain stem, which controls heart rate and breathing, uh, is altered in, in these circumstances. And in learning that, we can apply it to different disease states. So we hope to actually be able to apply to this to things like chronic heart failure, to stroke. The research is conducted on the brains of both the healthy and diseased, and they're interested in how the physiological systems change when stimulus is applied. For example, does the blood flow differently after a workout? We'll look at exercise, uh, we'll look at, we'll change the, the concentration of gases that they breathe in, so we can change uh, the amount of oxygen, we can change the amount of carbon dioxide. Uh, in the box that's behind me here, we can also decrease the pressure in their lower body, which effectively sucks the blood out of the upper body. Um, and your heart and your blood vessels and your brain compensate for that decrease. In I got into this uh, about six or seven years ago, and uh, I was interested in kind of whole body physiology, so why you and I can walk around, uh, why even though our brains are above our heart, we're, we're, we still remain conscious, because it's such a delicate system, but despite that, we, we, we for the most part managed to function quite well. Willie has received a number of accolades recently, among them a Vanier Scholarship in Interdisciplinary Studies, offered only to a handful of top applicants internationally. He credits his team, both here and worldwide, for helping him with his research. He's worked with researchers from Harvard and New Zealand and did a study in Perth, <laughs> Australia, analyzing a group of elderly people with and without dementia. His next project will involve traveling to Nepal with a team of 30 researchers to study the effects of high altitude on blood flow to the brain. There's a big research pyramid located at 5,000 meters, and we'll conduct about two weeks of experiments there. We'll be looking at cerebral blood flow, we'll be looking at, so that's brain function, we'll be looking at cardiovascular function, we'll also be looking at how people sleep at high altitude because there's a number of different sleep disturbances that become manifest um, at high altitude. In the future, Willie hopes to have the answers to the questions he is now studying. He expects to continue on in science, research, and academia. Ultimately, m my interest in it is in high altitude, um, and that's for two reasons. One, because I think that the human ability to cope with environmental challenges is, is fascinating, but also because um, high altitude is, is interesting in that otherwise healthy people will develop a series of pathologies that are very, very similar to uh, symptoms that we see in disease states such as chronic heart failure or uh, stroke. So we can use altitude in order to study those, those uh, states but in, in healthy people.